Life is an error making and an error correcting process. Find the right questions. You don't invent the answers, you reveal the answers. Our greatest responsibility is to be good ancestors. I feel that the greatest reward for doing is the opportunity to do more. Evolution favors the survival of the wisest. It is said to await certainty as to await eternity. Are we being good ancestors? A good parent gives their child roots and wings. If all the insects were to disappear from the earth, Within 50 years all life on earth would end. If all human beings disappeared from the earth, within 50 years all forms of life would flourish. Who owns the patent on this vaccine? Well, the people, I would say. There is no patent. Could you patent the sun? Solutions come through evolution. They come through asking the right questions, because the answers pre-exist. It is the questions that we must define and discover. You don't invent the answer you reveal the answer. The most important question we must ask ourselves is, are we being good ancestors? There is no such thing as failure, there is just giving up too soon. Good parents give their children roots and wings. Roots to know where home is, wings to fly away and exercise what's been taught them. Risks, I like to say, always pay off. You learn what to do, or what not to do. I think of the need for more wisdom in the world, to deal with the knowledge that we have. At one time we had wisdom, but little knowledge. Now we have a great deal of knowledge, but do we have enough wisdom to deal with that knowledge? What is important is that we, number one, learn to live with each other. Number two, try to bring out the best in each other. Your dreams tell you what to do, your reason tells you how to do it nothing happens quite by chance. It's a question of accretion of information and experience. I think of evolution as an error making and error correcting process, and we are constantly learning from experience. What people think of as the moment of discovery is really the discovery of the question. The mind in addition to medicine, has powers to turn the immune system around. I have had dreams and I have had nightmares, but I have conquered my nightmares because of my dreams. When I worked on the polio vaccine, I had a theory. I guided each experiment by imagining myself in the phenomenon in which I was interested the intuitive realm. The realm of the imagination guides my thinking. Eventually we'll realize that if we destroy the ecosystem, we destroy ourselves. Wisdom, it's something that you know when you see it. You can recognize it, you can experience it. I have defined wisdom as the capacity to make judgments that when looked back upon will seem to have been wise. A wisdom deficit, 
fewer elders and even fewer people who listen to them. I have come to recognize evolution not only as an active process that I am experiencing at the time, but as something I can guide by the choices I make. As a biophilosopher, as someone who draws upon the scriptures of nature, recognizing that we are the product of the process of evolution, and in a sense, we have become the process itself, through the emergence and evolution of our consciousness, our awareness, our capacity to imagine and to anticipate the future and to choose from amongst alternatives. My job is to help people see what I see. If it's of value, fine. And, if it's not of value, then at least I've done what I can do. If all insects disappeared, all life on earth would perish. If all humans disappeared, all life on earth would flourish. One of the greatest rewards for doing can be the chances it gives to do some more, even better. Intuition will tell the thinking mind where to look next. The art of science is as important as so-called technical science. You need both. It's this combination that must be recognized and acknowledged and valued. It is possible to create an epidemic of health which is self-organizing and self-propelling. When you inoculate children with a polio vaccine, you don't sleep well for two or three months. I'm saying that we should trust our intuition. I believe that the principles of universal evolution are revealed to us through intuition. And I think that if we combine our intuition and our reason, we can respond in an evolutionary sound way to our problems. It is courage based on confidence, not daring, and it is confidence based on experience. My ambition was to bring to bear on medicine a chemical approach. I did that by chemical manipulation of viruses and chemical ways of thinking in biomedical research. I speak about universal evolution and teleological evolution, because I think the process of evolution reflects the wisdom of nature. I see the need for wisdom to become operative. We need to try to put all of these things together in what I call an evolutionary philosophy of our time. If humankind would accept and acknowledge this responsibility and become creatively engaged in the process of evolution, consciously as well as unconsciously, a new reality would emerge, and a new age could be born. This is perhaps the most beautiful time in human history, it is really pregnant with all kinds of creative possibilities made possible by science and technology which now constitute the slave of man, if man is not enslaved by it I pictured myself as a virus or a cancer cell and tried to sense what it would be like. As a child I was not interested in science. I was merely interested in things human, the human side of nature, if you like, and I continue to be interested in that. That's what motivates me.